I don't know. The whole point of it was to bring hope, and I hope that it does that. Welcome to the Inspirational Art Association Podcast, a place where artists from around the world share what inspires them with Cindy Lattimore, an art curator and promoter who brings with her 13 years of experience. Settle in, get comfortable, and enjoy the behind the scenes exchange with not only world-class artists, but up and coming talent as well. Welcome to this edition, uh, this episode of the Inspirational Art Association podcast. And today we have Amy Railsford. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a delight to have you. This is your first year to exhibit at this show. And I'm so excited. And I got to meet you a little bit more at the mandatory meeting. So yes, and it was lovely that you and your husband were able to, to come to that. And uh, we'll be hanging out quite a bit in the next, uh, in a couple of weeks. So I want to introduce those that do not know Amy. She's from Sarasota Springs, Utah. She's a fine artist. Uh, she has been uh, painting. Oh, how, when did you start? I don't know how that information. What, how old were you when so you? Oh, I actually didn't start till I was almost thirty. I'm kind of a late bloomer. No, there's no such thing as late bloomers. <laughs> well, it feels that way. I mean, it was kind of an interesting story, but well, we can wait for that question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, great, because I also, this is, this is interesting because you do say in your bio that you sent to me that you hope to have your art hanging in many people's homes and intend to always be a lifelong student of art. And, um, you know, Dan Wilson, Mm -hmm. uh, his, he started at my art show and that's one of the things he said was that he someday wants to be in people's homes. Oh, is he not only in people's homes? He's in the temples. He's uh, all over the place. I mean, he's and just a, 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 such a gentleman, and uh, and does not hold back on what he he learns his path through through things. In fact, he didn't even think he was good enough to be in the art show. <laughs> so oh, I like to tease him. Yeah, I was like, oh dear, yeah. I wouldn't ask you if you would. He's pretty humble. I actually know him. I studied under him for a few years. So. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. That and six kids and you know, he's, he's a super guy. So anyway, Amy, uh, so you, you started when you were 30, is that, but you've always had a love for, for painting. So here's the thing. I actually didn't even get exposed to art until I was 29. And that's because I was raised in a home with an engineer for a dad and your <laughs> sister, computer programmers. It just was not a thing. And so unfortunately I just didn't have the opportunity Uh, until this is interesting. One day, just at a community activity, some older ladies invited me to a watercolor class and I'd never, I'd never painted anyway. So I went to this class and that kind of launched everything. So, wow. Well, that's interesting where you come from a family of engineers, because I know I've worked, I used to sell real estate. And if I worked with a, uh, a couple and the husband was an engineer, I would ask the title company, can you send the paperwork to him a week in advance? Because yeah, they, yes. <laughs> that's very ridiculous, like down to the T. And, <laughs> and actually, you know, I think having the trait of being attention to details is what's helped me get where I'm at. Like, I think that has been so important, being willing to correct the mistakes that I've made. I think that's what's what sets apart a, profes- a, part, a professional is them willing to correct those mistakes. So, yeah. Well, I am so anxious to talk to you about this piece called Unbroken. It is, uh, it's very unique. Uh, tell me, how did you come up with this piece and the story behind it and what you want people to feel from it when they see it at the exhibit? So this piece I painted for mothers and fathers or would-be mothers and fathers who have either lost children or haven't been able to have children. Um, I have actually had... Um, losses myself. And even though I have six children, it was really challenging to get there. So um, anyway, I, when I painted the piece, I want it to bring hope to people. I want, it's the image of a child reaching up their hands just outside of reach. And I just want people to know that even if they haven't had the blessing of children, their desires will be met one day and that there is someone waiting for them. And as to the title, as to why I named it Unbroken, I feel like the reason people lose children or can't have children is because something is broken. And so 
you know, one day that will be fixed and things will be unbroken. Oh, you know, that, uh, that subject matter is very dear, uh, to a lot of people. Uh, you know, there's, um, Oh, maybe it was about four or five years ago, there was an artist that came that had just recently uh, lost a three-year-old boy to a drowning accident. And uh, the painting that she did, uh, that's where she was able to find find some peace is in her own expression of, of uh, painting about it and being able to share that with so many people that come through through the show that uh, particular year, there was quite a few people that that could relate to that, that they're not the only ones that are suffering with that type of loss. I think it's, I think it's a really intense feeling. I think that people don't really understand if they've never been through it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I don't know. The whole point of it was to bring hope and I hope that it does that, so. Yes. Oh, most definitely. So how did you hear about the, or decide to apply uh, for this art show? Well, I'd heard about it in Dan Wilson's class. We mentioned him already. Uh, He had been attending the show or participating in it while I was a student. At that time, it wasn't the right time for me. I was, um, I just didn't really have a lot to contribute at that point. And it was this year when you sent out the artist invitational and just a call for artists. And I thought, well, I've been working on some projects this year. Maybe something will be what they're looking for. And so I applied. Oh, well, I'm glad you did. Your artwork is, is lovely. And I like to, uh, ch- when I'm deciding on the artist for the show, the variety, the different interpretations, and of course, the different types of, you know, oils, pastels, wax, um, sculptures, uh, stained glass, of course, but uh, so that there is a variety because inspirational art it means different things to different people. Yes. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be in scripture form. Um, It can be like this um, topic. Uh, I spoke to somebody a couple interviews ago that sold a piece for, um, I can't remember the name of the piece now, but it uh, sold to help fund uh, domestic abuse. uh, Wow. So um, I think that is so so touching to me that I'm able to bring something where people can be inspired because face it, there's not a whole lot out there, especially when it comes to the art and originals people, I think, uh, don't appreciate, but they're starting to, when they come to the show, what it means to have originals, um, available instead of, um, like my one daughter who, uh, is a, a decorator for uh, a big um, uh, builder in the the Boise area. She says just so many people um, can just go and buy, you know, an expensive piece of uh, print in a frame. And then it doesn't bother them to, okay, we're going to redo this room. Uh, But when she has gone into some people's homes, because she's been raised, you know, because I'm her mom, she's been exposed. Yes. (laughs) There is a sand harass in this house, and I'm so excited because they want me to decorate around it. And I'm like, oh, wow, yay. So um, that's what I love about this is exposing people to to this art that uh, and to the old masters. You know, we have a, a lot of artists that that um, that's their their focus and then some that, to bring a new a new element to the table. So on yours, what did, what made you decide to pursue this direction um, instead of going to like um, an old old masters or um, you know do digital and oh that well of- going back to what that first watercolor class I took I took watercolor for a while but then I just had this feeling that I needed to learn oils and it's very odd because I'd never seen oils I'd never touched them I didn't even know if I would like them. And so that set me on this path where I just tried to find people who would teach me at that time. I had three kids. I was a mom. Um, and so anyway, I just, I tried the university route. They wouldn't take me because (laughs) I know, right. That I was rejected because I couldn't go full time. I mean, they didn't, I, they wanted the space for students who would get a degree in a specific time and I couldn't do it. So at any rate, I found Bryce Billings who, was the 2014 grand prize winner of the portrait society. And he took me on and he told me I was a raw talent. I needed a lot of work. (laughs) He was right. He was right. But that kind of set me apart and I not set me forward. And, um, I just have always had a passion for it. I have big dreams and I love the medium. So 
Well, I'm excited to see your exhibit this year. Now, for those that are not familiar with the show, each artist that I select, and I've mentioned before that I can only have 34, 35 artists. Last year I had 37 and it was just almost too much uh, for me to promote, but also to put up into the limited space we have. Uh, years before we were downstairs off the lobby in the Bonneville room. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, t- two years ago, uh, they said, no, Cynthia, we're putting you up off the mezzanine in the um, the gold room, the the jade room and the president's room. And then we have a lobby. And at first I'm like, oh, how am I going to do this? But it's worked out beautifully. But the problem is, is each artist is allowed three panels that I set up and they that's all the space that they have. And so if you get many more, there's no place to put these artists, plus the crowds that come. Oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> the, the traffic control. And uh, it, it, it's uh, a big, important thing for me to have that so that they can see each artist and, and go through. And, and so um, that's, uh, I'm excited to see how your, your exhibit, your, your little tiny spot, it's not really tiny, but you know, so. My corner, my little corner. corner. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be exciting. So is there um, any questions that you would like to ask me about the show or, or. Yeah, definitely. I have wondered, I, first off, this is a volunteer position for you, correct? Is that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Yeah. So (laughs) you're, you're kind of stepped up to this and I just want to know why, like what brought you to that? (laughs) Why would you put yourself through this? Uh, I have a friend. Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, Teresa, uh, she's, um, oh, some people will know her, Teresa Egbert, but she's Teresa Cox. And uh, she would come down every year and kind of help me for a day or two because uh, at the table, because I don't want to be stuck behind the table selling and so forth. I want to be out mingling, talking to people. And she went, one of the last times she was there, she took me and she held my face. She goes, why do you do this? <laughs> why, why do I do this? Why not? I mean, because it didn't dawn on me that she goes, this would stress me out. I go, I don't get stressed. I'm not as, I, I mean, I, I love the arts and it just kind of fell in my lap. And I can't say that I don't get paid for it because there's been so um, many opportunities for me that uh, I love serving the, the artists, getting to know them. Some of them are such dear friends. As you know, we've had a um, our little granddaughter at primaries. Well, instead of staying in a motel, we've been able to stay with Sandra Rast. She's just opened up her home. You come and go. Even before Collins was born, uh, Kelsey and I stayed down there in case she went to labor for, you know, so that type of thing right there saved us a, a incredible amount of money uh, for motels uh, and so forth. But why do I do it? Why every year after I get done, I'm like, do I want to do it again? Because it does take a lot out. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> but then there is so much uh, reward. And then I have a lot of nice art in my home <laughs> that I have not had to pay for uh, because uh, they, they've they gifted me. And uh, can't, can't, no, not really, but I, I do. Uh, and I just have always, this is, you know, it's funny that you, know, you talk about, you didn't start till you were 30, but I just have always loved different arts, uh, going to like motels. Sometimes they'd have what they'd call starving artist sales. And uh, I didn't know what that really meant until I started working with artists. Uh, so I worked with that, uh, always was intrigued by the different art. I was inspired by the different art. I would decorate my home around different art pieces. And, and, uh, and it's funny to hear my, my kids talk about when they get together about, well, a couple of years ago, my daughter-in-law, my sweet daughter-in-law that's married to my youngest son, she asked me, she goes, does that bother you that your kids are saying, well, when mom and dad die, I get that piece. Or, <laughs> you know what, none of this stuff can go to these are industries because there's some money in these, even though it wouldn't, it's not maybe something they would like. But my one piece that um, my daughter-in-law said she wanted was uh, the George Washington at Valley Forge. Oh. It, that I bought at Desert Book. Oh, heavens, it has to be, gosh, 35, 40 years old. That's an amazing painting, though. What's beautiful. It, I'm familiar it, with it. It is. And, and I thought, of oh, all the artwork here in the home, 
that's when you want, but, but each piece has been very, has meant a lot to me. And it's interesting because the Lord puts you where you need to be. And, um, uh, there is a piece that Julie Rogers, uh, have you, have you met? Well, you'll meet Julie Rogers, but you've probably, you've heard of her. She's woman's week, uh, BYU and so mm-hmm. forth. A lot of her art is around the world. Uh, how big she is. I talk, she, she texts me, but all the correspondence comes from her assistant, you know, so she's, Oh, big. right. Right. Mm-hmm. One year she had a piece um, that's entitled a crossing the veil. And that December, I, little did I know that that next January, um, my sister, my only sister would be diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she just thought she had pulled a muscle in her leg and it just wasn't getting better. But um, she did not have a spouse. uh, uh, And, you know, I told her I'd be there with her to the end. And I was. And she died just five short months later. Not sick. I mean, we hung out together and everything. But that painting was very touching and helped me a a great deal because I was there when she crossed the veil. And uh, that experience in and of itself is another story. But... um, there's been different pieces like that. Like this piece that's behind me, mm-hmm. Scott Sumner's. I don't know if you've met him. Uh, I've heard of him. I've heard of him. Not met. How he, had the pleasure. He's flying out from Nauvoo to be in the show this year. Oh, wow. Last year, we did not know about our little granddaughter, Collins. Well, he gifted me this piece. And uh, it's a little child with a savior. And when we found out about uh, when my daughter came to tell me, you know, that something wasn't going to be quite right with this baby. Um, this piece has, you know, been very touching to me. So I, do I get paid? Oh yes, I do. I get paid. Plus we've had other op- opportunities. We ne- would not have been able to work on some of the stained glass temples uh, from our I hobby. About that. I've read, read about your husband. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, and it was when, uh, when we, uh, be- when we were married, uh, I've always liked stained glass I, and, uh, you know, and he would for Christmas or something, get me a little kid or whatever. But then uh, we were building the home that we're in now and he is boss. He just at the time had a boss come from California and he actually did stained glass commission pieces from all over the world. And he said, told uh, my husband, hey, if your wife really wants to learn, she needs to come up to my studio. And so I learned from him. And of course, Mark would come and. Uh, and he learned the same way. And then when we were building, there's the story from our home is we added on another garage. It was a double car garage. We all um, added a third car garage mm-hmm. and then two deep. Well, one day I got a call from the builder says, you need to come up and uh, come, what, do, what do you want to do with this room? Because I already had six bedrooms because we have five kids. And uh, I go, oh, well, I already have two living room. I mean, a living room and two family rooms, you know, from with five kids and all their friends come over, you know, you never, as you know, a six. Yes, kid. I know. I know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and we want this to be where they came. And um, so we made, I says, well, just put in a closet over there, walk-in closet, um, a door to go out to the, the back deck for the, with kids and a hot tub. Yes, that was a necessity and a sink. And it actually became our stained glass studio. And we just did different things, but put stained glass in the, in the show and the general authorities do come and different departments and saw, Hey, and they came one, one, one year and said, Hey, how would you like to go to Paris? Oh, fine. Uh, did you actually <laughs> go to Paris for that? Yeah. We were the only two Americans that went to Paris to work on the Paris temple. Yes. So it was, were you just like freaking out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, maybe inside, maybe inside. I don't know if I could tell you this or not, but see, our second daughter was expecting twins and high risk pregnancy. And we didn't know if they were sorry. I go, well, okay. Well, he, they, we were told we were going to go in February. Well, February came, we didn't go. And anybody that's worked for the church, you just, yeah, their deadlines are, yeah, they're not the, you can't count on those deadlines. Finally, we left in May. Well, that's when the twins were going to be born. And I said, well, maybe I shouldn't go. And Boy, they look up. You don't know. You're not a mom sometimes, but I ended up going. But I know because I went. See, this is another uh, blessing is because I went. She had those twins. They were healthy. She was home within 24 hours. And um, and I was sitting across from uh, uh, in a cafe in downtown Paris when uh, she she gave birth. And I know if I 
I, she was blessed with that because we were over there and the opportunities we had over there, we, we went around and spoke at firesides, had interpreters to do so and have lifelong friends. We've had, you know, they've come over and, uh, wow. uh what a story <laughs> it is. So, you know, when you say, why, why do I do that? That is because uh, we've been able to have opportunities uh, that uh, we wouldn't have had otherwise. And I love doing this. Plus, it helps with other other ventures that that I I'm always doing something. <laughs> my mind's always going. And so this also helps me with uh, my ultimate balance business and a, and a few things like that. And um and it's something my kids can come and hang out. They they all meet and support me in Salt Lake and and hang out because we're not able because we're all over the place can can do that. So I've been very fortunate that way. But uh, yeah, yeah, some some of my friends. But back to Sri. So when she asked me, I go, but why do you have this big apple orchard? I, there's no way I'd be out there picking or apples. You know, I have an apple tree in my backyard that the grandkids love to build forts in, but. I, I, I honestly, we've been here for 28 years. I can honestly say I've never gone out and picked the apples off the apple tree. My husband has, and my mother-in-law, when she was alive, they would make applesauce, but mm, no, I'd rather be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think you're setting an example for your kids of like a, a, a power mother, right? You're a mom, you chose to have children, but you also chose to have this career and, and be ambitious. And I think that's an awesome example for your children. And that's what I hope for my children as well. So. Uh, yeah, because what's more, the most important thing in life is I love being a mother. I love being a grandmother. And um, and uh, that Christ-like love that you have for your kids is like no other. And uh, I'm I'm grateful for that. And uh, so, yeah, for having that. And with your, your, how old are your children? My oldest is 17 and the youngest is uh, just turned four. So <laughs> we've got quite a range and it's with all the adventures, we get all the drama. There's nothing unique in my home. It's just the same as everybody else's. So sometimes <laughs> I just think, what did I do? But <laughs> you know what? I enjoyed every single, um, age. Some people all wait till you have a teenager. Well, we had teenagers and we survived, you know, but you know what? Be prepared for this. They get married. And then all of a sudden, oh, guess what we did when we were young and mom and dad. Oh no, I don't want to know. I literally oh, tell my kids when they want to tell me, don't tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> that you're perfect. You know, don't, don't, don't tell me. Or, or we find out some of the things we go, oh, if we had known that, we would have turned the security system on, or we would have gone and crawled in their bed when they had snuck out. Oh, you no. know, none of them ended up in jail. So I guess I'm grateful. And they were with really good, really good kids. But uh, yeah. I think they yeah, have to their own way. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad that they're having grandkids. My grandkids are putting them through some of their things. And I just sit there and and just don't encourage them, mom. And I go, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, so the art show is November 30th. Of course, that's invitation. I mean, RSVP and ticket only. And then uh, December 1st through the 3rd from 10 to 9. People can come and uh, talk with you artists, look at the artwork, and of course, buy. I mean, we love to see that artwork go. Uh, but opening night is very crowded, so it's kind of nice to have it not so crowded. But, you know, last year it was it, it was constant, so that's uh, we welcome it no matter what. So you artists put a lot of work into it, and, uh, and I don't advertise. This show does not, uh, the, my advertising is Facebook. And a lot of people already know about that uh, through through you artists too, uh, because I do print off really nice invitations that you send out to people. And uh, it's nice to get phone calls like, okay, I want to sit at Amy's table. Well, Amy's table's full. What <laughs> table two or table three that's next to her. <laughs> so, uh, so it's nice, but it's always sold out. There's only 200 people that can be in that room. So are there still tickets available for that dinner? Um, there's a few. Yeah, there's a few because actually you do not have your reservation ironclad until I receive the money because um, mm-hmm. I have to pay JSMB somehow. <laughs> and it's yeah. not, not yes. cheap real estate down there. So uh, make sure that, that that show's paid for before we ever go in. Yeah, it's always my goal. And then whatever happens on the other side uh, is a blessing. And for those that we touch at that show. So, well, Amy, I was so glad to get to know you a little bit, and uh, I hope I didn't go too long on why I do it, but there's just no set reason why I do it other than I, 
it does uh, take up a lot of time, but from from September till now, it is pedal to the metal, but I enjoy it. And every year I try to think of different ways to 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 make you artists enjoy the show more and get you more promoted out there. And uh, I appreciate and, that. I truly do. I truly and it's do. rewarding to see artists go go their careers just take off from the show. So uh, that's that's a reward for me. So that's wonderful. And remember me when if you want to have, you don't want to take a piece home or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah. I just have a spare one laying around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Amy. Well, uh, we will be seeing you in a few weeks and look forward to, to getting to know you better. And uh, you have a great uh, Thanksgiving that will be coming up in a few weeks. You, likewise, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you.